Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another day at BS for Build. And today's video is gonna be just that. It's a day at BS for Build. We're gonna be scattered around doing a couple different things. We gotta check some clearances. We're gonna check some measurements. Gonna get creative and some cabin space. Gotta check that the doors fit, the rear hatch fits. And then if we have time, I'd like to get started on the roll cage. Stay tuned. So first thing that I've really been looking at and worrying about today is cabin space. We didn't talk about this much on the last video because I didn't really want to derail it, but um, once we did our cut downs and we brought our body in, I noticed that obviously that's pushing the seat position pretty far forward and uh, that's not a lot of leg room. We were a lot worried about the width, which I measured and that seems to be okay, but we immediately noticed that we had, you know, we had a cramped cabin in here. So I've been doing some measurement. And what I've been doing is I've been coming over to my 370Z and using this as kind of the reference point, emulating the seat position, steering wheel position, headroom, because it has a similar shaped cockpit. So the first thing that I've been measuring out is the distance from the back of that seat going forward, like how much foot room we need. Um, and there's about four feet in there, uh, pedal width and other stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump back inside and do the counter measurements on the other car and see how it looks. Well, it's not to a point where it's impossible to move forward, but it is not at a point where it's gonna be the most comfortable thing. Um, we're about two inches shy from the width between the, the frame rail of the car and the transmission tunnel. And we're about four inches shy as far as driver leg room going from the back of the driver's seat forward. A lot of what's messing us up is this right here. It's too thick, it takes up too much space, it comes out too far forward. If we, if we could like delete this rail, which we absolutely cannot, um, we would be perfectly fine. Now four inches to take up isn't the end of the world. It's, it's uh, you know, a little bit, it's four inches off of ideal for the ideal driving position, but it's nothing, it's nothing that's gonna completely ruin a build. Uh, I got a seat over there. It's bigger than the seat that I bought. Um, I bought some really thin Sparco seats for this build after I found out how little cabin space we have. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab that seat and try and set it in here somewhere and just jump in and kind of see what it feels like. With this seat in there, which this seat I measured is about four inches wider than the seat that I bought, so it's not really a great representation, but with this seat in here and in the non-optimal uh, kind of like slid slid too far forward seating position, the, the position that my body is in in the cabin is all right. It's not too bad. My head's at a good level. I would actually like my head to be a little bit higher up so I could either uh, tilt the seat forward a little bit more or we could raise the seat up from the bottom. Um, I'd like my head to be about two to three inches higher than it was when I was in there. Uh, to get a big long hood. I definitely want to be able to see over it. I don't want to be like looking from down, out, and up. Anyways, um, my leg room is okay, but what we're looking at right, right here, when we mount this firewall and we're talking about mounting the pedals, you know, pedals come out a good two to three inches and I need to know where they're gonna come out from. And the other thing is, is we're not really looking at a fair representation of this here because the exhaust manifold uh, lives right there and it's got to collect from five cylinders and come down somewhere and I don't know where it comes down I don't remember what it looks like I have it at home and I really want to go get it so I could figure out if this thing is gonna work because it, imagine if there's a big exhaust thing like right here not only is there no room for your feet there's definitely no room for pedals and then we're in like a really really bad spot so I got to do it uh, it's gonna really screw up today's episode because uh, traffic and stuff but I want to do it, so I'm going to run straight home right now. I'll go grab that exhaust manifold and we'll come right back and see how it looks. Just got back from my house and I got both the exhaust manifolds here. If you guys remember, the car came with no exhaust manifolds on it. The owner probably had like a custom exhaust system and wanted to remove it before the car went up for auction. I got both of these together combined for $500, which is a really, really good deal because they actually do come with a catalytic converter as well, which the game plan for us is we're gonna be deleting that and building our own custom catalyst system. But just getting this part, this section right here for $500 is a really, really good deal because I think these are about 2,000 bucks each if you have to buy them new from factory. So that's pretty cool. Now let's see if this is gonna be like my biggest nightmare once I throw this thing on here, if it's gonna come out right, sticking right at my seat or not, or we'll figure out where it lands.
Well, that's a stroke of luck if I've ever seen one. This exhaust manifold is designed in a, in a way that's very, very helpful for us. Remember, we're not using the catalytic converter. We take this bracket, flip it around, use it on the other side, chop this whole thing off right about here, keep running at a downward angle. So, uh, so for the cabin space, basically, you're behind this frame rail um, and run down, follow the frame rail, then do a little 45 right there and start going backwards. You wanna keep it as far away from the um, SMG transmission gadgetry as possible because those don't do really well with the different heat changes from the exhaust. So it'll come over here, follow this frame rail and go back and uh, the exhaust isn't a problem. So that's one good thing. The next thing that I'm worried about is the brake booster. The M5 has a massive brake booster, stuff goes around here. I'm gonna go ahead and go take a look at the M5 and see how that works. We're out here on the M5 and this is the brake booster with whatever I don't know what this thing is here. It seems to run some water lines. I'm not really sure. It might be a water recirculation pump. I remember that this car uh, runs water even when the car isn't running for some reason. So that's probably what that is. Uh, anyways, we have 14 inches of width on the Datsun and we have about 14 inches of stuff right here. So that looks good. Now, what I was worried about is does the brake booster have to be an exact orientation to where the brake pedal's gonna be because I'm not sure if ours is gonna be straight or not. But then I remembered, you know, Pedals often go a little bit sideways and this one is no different. You can actually see the angle there So it goes pretty much straight up after that to the brake booster But if we need to accentuate that angle over a little bit more we could definitely do that It's not a problem that way if our brake booster is over further It could still match up with our gas pedal and be real nice and snug next to it It's about seven inches of pedal stuff right there I'll see how much room we have in the car. It looks like we're gonna be okay. There's just not gonna be a lot of room on the right or left because we have that stupid frame rail like right here. I would hate to build a car where you go to press the brake and you accidentally press the frame rail and nothing happens. That'd be dangerous. In other news, let me show you something that's absolutely and for sure 100% not gonna work. From that back wall over there, basically the front of the firewall, going up to here, the steering wheel is roughly 31 inches away. Now it's a tilting wheel, it could go up and down and whatever. 31 inches away, it's got about, I don't know, six inches of overlap onto the seat. Let me measure that. I'd say six or seven inches of overlap onto the seat for a comfortable driving position, meaning you're gonna get in and your seat's gonna kinda tuck under the steering wheel. Six to seven inches. But remember that other one was like 32 inches? If we give ourselves a generous measurement from the firewall the proposed firewall location over there coming this way, 32 inches is right about the end of the tape there, meaning it's sitting over the seat like 10 to 12 inches and it sticks the steering wheel pretty much five inches away from your back. So we obviously can't have our steering wheel landing right here. Um, so we can shorten the steering wheel length, that's fine. That's no problem, uh, the, the length of the rod that goes to the steering wheel. We can shorten that up. But what that really means is that that M5 dash, there's no way that it's ever gonna fit in here in any, in any normal way. It's just too long of a dash. The dash would literally stick out to like right here and it would be ridiculous. So my dreams of the M5 dash ever working in here, those are totally gone. But we have to keep all the electronics from the M5 to be able to power the brains of this guy. Can't just build a nice little flat panel here and put a race pack on there and call it a day. Boy, would that be nice. Well, we know the challenges that we're faced with. We have a tight cabin space. We know the result of that is probably gonna be a pretty tight driving situation and we don't get to run that M5 dashboard. We'll do a DIY dashboard or of some sort or mix and match. Maybe we'll use 370Z dashboard kind of on top so it has a nice look for it on top and then it kind of has like a flat face underneath. That's what a lot of race cars do. And you know, so we're definitely gonna have a minimalistic race car style dash. Uh, I think though, in the end, it is a small price to pay for what we're trying to do here. I mean, it's hard enough to pull off if somebody said, yeah, you can have this and it all work, but you're gonna have a kind of cramped driving situation. I would answer, that's cool, I would like the V10, please. So I think, I think that's just, we, I just gotta live with that and, and we gotta move on. Cause the only other option honestly is to just stop the build and, and put this in my Camaro and then there is no answer of anything what to do with this 240Z. And I, I don't wanna do that. I wanna build this 240Z, so it's happening. We're gonna keep moving forward. The fact that I'm six inches short on leg room is not going to stop me. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is I need to set the doors in the door hole and make sure that the door holes uh, are still happy with the doors. I'm noticing right now that we don't have the, the, the threaded, the plates that have the threads in them, you know, the thing that the doors bolt to. So I may be actually physically holding the door 
in the door hole and just making sure that it all lines up still. Because now that we put the taking the body off of the rest of the body and put it on here, we want to make sure nothing's warped or out of out of uh, out of spec. We don't want to get really far down the road and then have our doors not shut. That'd be terrible. Good news, the doors totally fit right. The only weird thing is, is it seems like this hinge, like this hinge mounting plate right here is I believe too far forward to mount with this. So I don't know, I think this is a 70, I think that this body is a different year than these doors and I don't know if they changed any of the hinge, hinge mechanisms uh, throughout the door years. I'm not really sure. Anybody that's a Z aficionado, please leave me a comment below. Let me know, are they all the same or is it possibly a little bit different? Um, but it was the same on both sides. It just looked a little bit off. But I believe I still have, no, I don't have the hinges from this car. So uh, although I have all the mounting plates and stuff for that car, I don't have the hinges for this car. So that could be an issue, but we could work it out by buying the right uh, hinge that goes onto the door. Uh, other than that, the doors fit up perfectly. They still are holding this the right shape. Everything looks good. But that driver's side door, uh, which I already put back um, in the BS for Build storage facility, AKA my house, um, it, it's so dinged up. I don't think it's really worth repairing it. So I'm, I'm in the market now for a new door as well. So I'm gonna buy a new uh, drive, driver's side door. Yeah, so not a big deal, um, but I'll, I'll try and find one of those, source one of those from around here. I'll hit up my Z buddies and let them know I'm in the market. So that's good. Last thing is the rear hatch. Let's go ahead and just grab the rear hatch, bring it on in here, make sure it fits. There we have it. We got great panel gap all the way around and it actually it actually latched and shut itself in there too. So uh, that's good, the latch works. So our rear window is great. Um, this rubber has seen better days. I'm gonna go ahead and make a note to order some more rubber. And what I did on the front was I actually ordered the rubber that doesn't have the metal trim because I think the metal trim is a little, it's not, it's not a look that I'm really liking. So rather than painting, worrying about painting that chrome black and getting it set in the rubber and stuff like that, if I can find it, I'll go ahead and just get this rubber trim without any metal trim built into it. I think it looks a lot better. And I would expect to see that being installed the day before we have to leave for SEMA. That's my guess. But it's all good. We have the right panel gaps all the way around, meaning the body is, um, well, it's not destroyed. All right, so the next thing that we wanted to do today is take a look at our main hoop for the roll cage. And we have it sitting right over there. And while we have the seat in there, I think it would be really good to try and do some test fitting and, and, and positioning around. So remember the main hoop connects into that piece right over there. There's one on each side. Right now the seat's kind of bumping into it. So we gotta find a happy medium between the seat fitting in the car and the main hoop fitting as well. But keep in mind that this seat is three inches wider than our other seat that's actually coming. So we'll, we'll have a little bit more wiggle room than this seat. So for our roll cage bar here, our main hoop, this thing is gonna, right now it's just sitting on some rubber down there. It's gonna hop up to here and it's gonna kind of be on, on the corner of this, like halfway on, maybe a little bit off. I'm not really sure, I haven't decided how far, but it can't go all the way on because we wanna leave some room for a seat bracket over there. Um, and then let me try and lift this up and show you where it's gonna land. Okay, I just realized I can't actually hold this thing and tell you what I'm doing with it, but it's gonna angle back like this. It's gonna be up a little bit further in the front there on both sides, so, so it's hitting on there. It's gonna angle back like this, go up to the roof. Sorry, it's really hard to see, but it's gonna come up to the roof like, uh, like you know, like maybe around there, get, a, get much closer to the roof. And then it's gonna come all the way back, back, back to somewhere like that. So there's about a one to a one and a half inch gap between, probably about a one inch gap between this bar and that piece of the uh, roof's frame rail right there. And then what we'll do is we'll create a strip of metal uh, that has a bunch of these dimple dies in it and it'll go across here and we'll weld it from there to this bar right here. And it'll look really good. So that's the game plan. Before we do that, all this stuff needs to be cleaned up because once the bar's in there, it's gonna be really hard to clean it up. And I definitely don't wanna do that today. 
All right, guys, weird day. Went through a lot of ups and downs. I feel like, though, we figured out some stuff, and, and, and I, I know emotionally now what to expect, and we just gotta keep, keep putting in the hours, keep doing one thing after the next, and this thing will come together. Will it all come together on time? I'm not really sure. <laughs> But we'll bring a good looking car to SEMA. I'm not 100% sure if it's gonna run or not, but hey, figure that out in the next episode of Beers for Build. And I'll see you then, and that, will be, that, that would be tomorrow. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Peace!